is Wednesday, the 21st of September, and this is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome. We move into the 25th chapter of the book of Genesis and the conclusion of Abraham and Sarah's active role in the promise keeping of God. We're told in the first verse that Abraham took another wife. Her name was Keturah. Keturah is little known in scripture. She gives to Abraham a number of other sons, and so Abraham indeed does have many offspring, but they are not the offspring of the covenant or the promise. Ishmael and Isaac have those two particular roles. Isaac is the child of the covenant of the promise. Ishmael, of course, is blessed by God because he comes to Abraham first. Keturah is an interesting and somewhat shadowy figure. There is, in fact, midrash from the rabbis teaching down through the centuries that Keturah is actually Hagar, who is Ishmael's mother. The reason for this is because Keturah and Hagar, apparently, in two different languages, mean somewhat the same thing. The other thing it explains is why the funeral of Abraham, which is the next part of this story, is the way it is. At verse 7, it says this is the length of Abraham's life, 175 years. And again, let's not get wrapped up in whether this is miraculous or counted differently. Uh, the plain fact is that God has sustained Abraham's life long enough to keep promises. It tells us that Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. Now let's stop there a minute. This is a whole different way of looking at death only as loss, which is what we do in our society. As Ernst Becker in his famous book says, we are people who are about the denial of death. We don't want anything to do with death, but there seems to be a sense here for one who has lived a good long life, who has achieved a good old age, that there is peace in death, and that comes when you're gathered to your people when your people who are still alive are around you and your ancestors are with you and before you, as Sarah is. Abraham does not die in isolation and loneliness in this individualized world that we live in. We often do. We die only with regret, regrets and think that once we die, we do it completely alone. That's not what the scriptures teach us. It tells us in verse 9 that his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah. Same cave where Sarah is buried. That's in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar the Hittite, east of Mamre. We know exactly where we're talking about here. It's the field that Abraham purchased from the Hittites, we're told. So he's buried with his wife Sarah, with his people. It's interesting that Isaac and Ishmael are both here together. That's one of the things also that leads the, the rabbis in their midrash that Keturah is Hagar. The two boys are bought, brought back together, even though they represent two different promises. They are brought back together. What is divided, God seems to be able to pull together. We're told then that after the death of Abraham, God blessed his son Isaac. In other words, the covenant moves on now to be sustained through Isaac, and Isaac settles near that land. The covenant continues, generation to generation. Perhaps we should ponder that. We live in an age where we get less and less concerned with the fact that we are yet the next generation in the children of Abraham, that we are the ones through Jesus Christ who have been grafted on to the, the tree of Abraham and so therefore carry on the promise. Instead, we're busy doing other things. We are part of a people. And today, we remember those people, Abraham and Sarah, 
Keturah and Hagar, Ishmael and Isaac, and all the generations that come down to us. We give thanks for them. Let us pray. Holy, mighty, and gracious God, to each generation you bring purpose and meaning. You surround us with a great cloud of witnesses, the communion of saints. Lord, we do not die alone, <clears throat> but among your people. We die in a great chain of witnesses that goes on and on. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to be promise bearers, that you would fulfill in us the redemption of the world that you would continue to sustain us as children of Abraham and Sarah. Amen.